Hi, and welcome to somewhere very close to home, the historic Rochester in Kent. And when I say close, it's about five miles away. And why not subscribe, because we do go a little further afield, I promise. Rochester is in the southeast of England in the beautiful county of Kent, roughly 30 miles from the centre of London. Today's journey will take us along the full length of the high street before doubling back to head up towards the vines where we cut across, take a slight detour to then pick up the precinct before heading onto the cathedral, looping back towards Rochester Castle and finally onto the Esplanade. So let's start with the high street and I said this would be historic. The high street follows the ancient Roman road from London to Dover known as Watling Street and this has been the route from London to the continent for hundreds of years. Even a young Princess Victoria stopped at the Bull Hotel prompting a name change and if you've got time on your hands then I recommend checking out the Guildhall Museum. It's free, it has a wonderful interior and tell some fascinating stories. And another place to explore is Baggins Book Bazaar. This wonderful second-hand bookstore is like Doctor Who's TARDIS. It's much bigger on the inside than you'd expect. One of the things I love about wandering down Rochester High Street is the different styles of buildings from different periods, all with their own unique history and story. And talking of Rochester and stories, there's one name that springs to mind, a Mr Charles Dickens. You may discover as you wander along plaques that designate that this building or that building featured in one of his works. Now one of the buildings that stands out for me is the old corn exchange with its clock. I think it's just striking. It's not long before you come to College Gate which leads up towards the cathedral and the castle. But hey, we're moving on up further along the high street. And I love the high street, from Johnson's Hardware Store on our left to those aimed at tourists with loose links to Charles Dickens. There's a fine selection of bars, cafes, restaurants, all manner of shops. There's almost something for everyone. Halfway along the high street you'll come across Rochester's Visitor Centre. It's also home to a Bijou Art Gallery and Britain's only Huguenot Museum. For those that don't know, the Huguenots were French Protestants who fled their country due to religious persecution and settled around the world, bringing their skills with them. And in 1959, La Providence, or the French Hospital, was relocated to Rochester and it provides almshouses to those of Huguenot descent. As I mentioned, we'll just has one or two pubs, and if I have a designated driver with me, then sometimes I may pop into my favourite, the Shepherd Neem Two Brewers. One of the most impressive buildings along Rochester High Street has to be Eastgate House. This late 16th century manor house is now under public ownership and I'll add a link in the description below to detail the opening times. You're free to wander around the garden at the back where there's some local history as well as the relocated Swiss cottage where Charles Dickens penned some of his works.
There's plenty more variety as you stroll down the high street, but it's time to turn round and head back to take in the vines. We now want to take ourselves up Crow Lane, past Rochester Baptist Church, where you'll start to notice the name Vines appear. It's at the top of the hill we come across Restoration House, so named as King Charles II, stayed here prior to his restoration to the throne. It's opposite here you come across the park known as the Vines, that was once a vineyard. So if you think winemaking in England is a new thing, think again. The park makes an excellent place to stop, have a picnic and just relax for a while. take you to an area that I believe is called the precinct but I'm not going to take you the direct route I'm going to take you on a little detour and the cause of the detour well yep it's a pub the Cooper's Arms certainly worth popping into if you're in town if you have the chance it's a great little pub With an eye shot of the castle, we now head in towards the precinct, past the Prior's Gate, another medieval structure in Rochester. But we're not going to step through. Once again, a little detour around Minor Cannon Row, where we discover a row of terraced houses from around 1725. It's now not far until we reach Rochester's Cathedral. Our first view is through the Garden Gate to the Cloister Garth Gardens, where we saw the Knife Angel exhibition. Rochester Cathedral does hold several exhibitions throughout the course of the year. Check their website, which I'll include in the description below, for more details. Rochester Cathedral is England's second oldest, dating back to AD 604. Although what you see before you is much newer, dating from about 1080. I told you there's plenty of history in Rochester. I haven't included any footage from inside the cathedral as a matter of respect. However, we have written a post on it. So once again, I'll leave a link in the description below. Outside Rochester Cathedral stands a catalpa tree, or an American Indian bean tree, said to be between 140 and 150 years old. And again we come across College Gate, or to give it its other names, the Chertsey Gate, the Cemetery Gate, and Jasper's Gate. Once again, a Charles Dickens reference. But now it's time to head up towards the Norman Castle. We stroll up Bowley Hill, along the western edges of the castle's walls and here you get some pretty impressive views of the keep of the castle but the observant may notice that actually one of the towers is circular and the others are square but we'll get to that in a minute here we can see King's School the second oldest in the world and then you come across stories of sieges and pie powder courts there's just so much history here the Norman Castle dates from around about 1080, built by the Normans after the Battle of Hastings of 1066, although the impressive keep standing before us dates from around about 1127. So let's get back to that round tower 
and it does indeed have to do with the siege of 1215 when King John laid siege to the castle that was held by local rebels. So they mined under the southeast corner, supported wooden trellises before setting light to it. You may have seen the movie Ironclad that was very, very loosely placed on that story. Nowadays the grounds are a great place to relax and the castle itself is certainly worth a visit. And in the northeast of the grounds you'll come across a cannon. This was captured during the Crimean War from the Russians. It's here we take the steps down to our final destination of the Espionade. Okay, that's a little bit of a fib. Here's the gardens from the castle walls. Actually, this is another place where you can just stop, relax, and enjoy the boats moored up on the River Medway, whilst taking in the view of the Medway Bridge. Well, that brings our visit to Rochester to an end. If you like this, why not check out Faversham, another fabulous Kentish town, or the story of the Norman invasion from battle. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and safe travels.